And uh, it will be in a special way uh, through these young confirmands who come before you, and we pray for them, that uh, your praise would not only be on theirs and our lips this day, but every day of our life until that day that we're able to sing our praises to you in your glorious throne room in heaven with all the saints who have gone before us, with all the angels, and everyone who adores and believes in you. In your name we pray. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. How you guys doing? You all ready? Yeah. They're ready. Man, I know they're ready because they have written uh, some incredible... Uh, they put together some incredible words that uh, God has blessed them with to express uh, what's on their hearts. Uh, something that has been given to them is a gift. And, uh, and we're here to, to celebrate with them in that. Uh, we've had the opportunity this year uh, to go through the story. Um, both in your curriculum as confirmands, but also as a congregation, as, uh, as we took a close look at that story. And, and just a few weeks ago, uh, we took a look at that early church, those first believers, those first disciples, uh, and I wonder what it was like for them. And, uh, and I want to just present to you that it really isn't any different for us today. Um, it says that when they had come to that place of believing in what that story says, and by the way, uh, many of them were around for a lot of that three years that uh, Jesus was on the earth and taught, and, and uh, they, they had a chance to, to learn firsthand about Jesus, and, and they believed in him, and they confessed him. But in the book of Acts, we learn what they did after um, he ascended and what they did the whole time then between when Jesus ascended and when he would come back or when they would die and be with him forever. And I, and I want you to hear this because I think it's something we all need to be reminded of on a regular basis. Uh, and, and that has to do with what they devoted themselves to. In, in Acts chapter 2, verse 42, it says they, that is, all the disciples, not just the apostles, but the disciples, which you are, devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching, to fellowship, to breaking of bread, and to prayer. And my question today in our message is, you know, why? Why did they do that? I mean, they already believed in Jesus. Why not just, hey, we got it made. Let's just kick back and enjoy life. And, you know, we've got heaven waiting. Streets paved with gold. and I mean, it doesn't get any richer than that, right? I mean, you're God's children. Well, you're theirs too, but, I mean, after all, you're God's children. Who are they? No, just kidding. <laughs> I'm getting looks now. <laughs> but that can be our attitude sometimes toward, you know, taking, uh, taking it all for granted. And yet, uh, today, we, we take a closer look at that question. Why did they devote themselves so intently on those four things? On the apostles' teaching, on the fellowship, and the breaking of bread, and prayer. And actually, these four have a lot of the reason why. And, it, and it's all wrapped up in what Jesus means to them. And so uh, I'm going to invite them to share that today. And, and i got to remember here uh, which, which one we're starting with. Kermit's last. So... See, I, got, I, got, I shouldn't have put you two on the ends, this, but this is great. With Landon's going first. Landon, please. I chose the word confidence 
can always be confident and can always be and carry for me even in the best times. I can be confident that he will help me make the right choices. This word also relates to me when it comes to my spirit. I can be confident in Jesus to help me in my spirit, to be a good spirit, and play my best in my own life. That is why I chose this book. This one little word, just one little word, can mean so many things when it comes to Jesus. Finally, and most importantly, when my time on earth is done, I'm confident that I will be in heaven with Jesus and the believers for eternity. Living my life with confidence, that is what Jesus wants me. This brings me to my verse, which is Philippians 2, 14 through 16, which is, do everything without grumbling or arguing, so that you may become blameless and pure, children of God without flaw in a warped and crooked generation. Then you will shine among them like stars in the sky, as you hold firmly to the word of God. And then I will be able to boast on the day of harvest that I did not wonder or labor in vain. This verse relates to me because I sometimes do things more quickly or ugly, such as cleaning or doing only chores. This verse reminds me that I can glorify Jesus through what I do when I don't grumble and argue. Our world has enough people who like to grumble and argue. And I will just try to shine in with the confidence I have in Jesus, so that I always remind him that his love for all of us. When it comes to Jesus, there are so many things you can say about him, because he is the greatest person to ever live on. Jesus means many things to me, and he plays a huge role in my life, your life, and everyone's life. That is why we should include him in our everyday life. Thank you, Landon. I, nick I nicknamed him Kermit this morning because uh, he's got this frog that, that uh, and, and he, he took off like a racehorse in our practice the other night. And I think the frog really helped you slow down. So uh, it, it's just good stuff. Good. Thank you for uh, sharing that. And, uh, and I know Avery's been excited to go with this. And so, Avery, would you please come and share uh, what you've written? What does Jesus mean to me? As a teenager, I guess I realize that God is best in my life. I know that God creates everything that is available to me. I know that everything happens for a reason and that God controls it. Whether good or bad things happen in my life, I hope that I have guidance from God to make good decisions. I know I have a family to guide me, but as my life goes on, I want to make decisions for myself. I want to succeed in life and hope that God will guide me. I have learned that praying is a very strong spiritual skill. His mom is badly in cancer. She has had many treatments and will also need surgery. I know that many people are praying for her during her journey. She has been feeling low through the treatments receiving great results. She continues to take care of the family and is strong. I believe this is possible because of her. I have a close, I have close family members that have battled cancer and is here. It is hard to understand why cancer shows to other people. Besides cancer affecting my family, recently my grandma had a heart attack and she is still with us today. I'm thankful that everyone is still alive. I guess everything in this world happens for a reason. Stressful days where I find myself pondering what would happen in my life. Sometimes feeling frustration with things that with things give me joy, but the feeling of accomplishment. Isaiah 58, verse 7, the verse to share with you is among those who are in shelter and close to the Lord, and your healing will quickly appear. This shows me how God provides for you and you as you follow the ways and make you. In a sense, where God guides, He provides. This verse makes me realize how blessed I am. I will have hard decisions in my life. I feel like God has been with me and I will take all of the things that He has laid on me. I'm excited for the future. I love my family, friends, and the opportunities that will be open to me. Thank you, Andrew. Now there's a look of relief right there. <laughs> 
Yeah, great job. I, I want to just say uh, Avery brings out some very important things in that message that, uh, as, as both these guys have said, our dependence is on God. Uh, and the thing he said that, that tells us why we're here is he wants to make the decisions. And uh, while people have brought him to this place, parents and godparents and grandparents, it's, uh, it's, they're standing here of their own accord to give confession. So uh, we continue with uh, the beauty among the beasts, and that is Jocelyn, if you would, please. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Jocelyn. It's, it's great. Uh, by the way, everything you hear today, I, uh, I just got to read it. This is them. And uh, by the way, uh, you can just sense their personalities, how God uses that, leads them to the scriptures they pick, uh, you know, the peace, the love, the service, but man... When you get her on a court, tenacious competitor. So uh, all those things wrapped up. And finally, uh, Luke is going to bring up, he's not last, or he's not least, but he is last. I know I don't have to earn Jesus' love, but I want to try to live my life in a way that shows 
Confidence came through uh, each one, even as the knees might shake. Or uh, you guys did a great job. You blessed us with uh, with the reason why they devoted themselves, and and why now you have the opportunity to devote yourselves. And I heard it, especially as you wrapped up uh, for us here, Luke. Um, Jesus does love us, and we're we're sure of that because of what He's done. Uh, we can be devoted now by choice because he chose to be devoted to us completely, even unto death on the cross. Uh, he was devoted in his whole life. I must go to Jerusalem. I must be turned over to evil men. I must suffer. I must die. But I will rise again. And he did. He is risen. He is risen indeed. Hallelujah. And, and therefore, now we too can uh, say we need to be devoted. And I, and I come back to, uh, you know, Landon's verse in Philippians, uh, you know, because we live in this world, as we said in Psalm 23, even though I walk through what? The valley of the shadow of death, I will, I will fear no evil. Not even the evil of death. And, uh, and yet we can go through, and it, I'm sure you twins never grumbled at each other before, right? Yeah, it's, it's easy to, to grumble at siblings, to grumble at mom and dad, to grumble uh, at, at friends that disappoint you. Uh, it's, it's easy to get into entitlement, what I should get out of this. There's all kinds of reasons and yet, uh, they devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching, as you pointed out in this passage very well, so that God can keep us blameless. God can help us to be that instrument that he wanted us to be in this world. And that we could shine like stars uh, in, in a very dark world. And, and when we shine like stars, it's, it's because of the light of the love of Jesus shining through us. And you're going to continue to, to devote yourself to the breaking of bread, to, to communion, and, and as Luke's passage points out, so that you can be renewed on wings like eagles. And all of us, if, if we weren't devoted to this fellowship, if we weren't devoted to these things that God blesses us through, through His Word, through the sacrament, and so today I say to you, welcome to the beginning. Because that's what this is. This is the beginning of a time to be devoted. To be devoted to your future that God has already marked out for you to run and live out according to His purpose. Today is the new beginning. To be devoted, just as you've been devoted in the past, in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Yeah. You guys always make me cry. It wasn't always for happiness either, but <laughs> no, I have to I have to say truthfully, this has been a great bunch to be with uh, all through. 
Uh, and Lisa would probably attest to that. I'd come home happy on Wednesday nights. And uh, that's saying something for them because uh, they made my job easy. So I'm going to invite them forward to present themselves at the altar of our Lord. They always go, oh, this is going to be so easy. <laughs> Dear friends of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, uh, he said to us, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit and, and teaching them everything God has commanded he promised further that I will be with you always to the very end of the age. Uh, those words most likely were spoken at your baptism uh, as they were read and reminded us of what the mission is of our Lord Jesus. And, and you have been baptized and you have been taught the faith according to our Lord's asking. Um, the fulfillment of his asking is uh, we now celebrate with thankful hearts. That's why we're all gathered here today. To rejoice in your confession of faith in which you were baptized and which you yourselves will now confess before the church. Uh, however, before you do that, I want you to turn around and I want you to look back. Okay, And this is kind of looking back to your uh, past. Uh, God brought you into the family through holy baptism, and there were people that had to be faithful for that to happen. And I want to recognize uh, those people, and if I could have the parents of these four, please stand. Okay. Uh, this was the first line of defense for uh, the Holy Spirit uh, to work in hearts, to move them to bring their children to the waters of holy baptism. Uh, but without them, uh, or, or without these next group of people, these one, this first line wouldn't have been there, and that is the grandparents, if, if you would stand as well. God has uh, given you these people uh, intimately in your family to, uh, to represent Him, in your life and to carry out the part of teaching everything God has commanded, but they didn't do it alone either. They ask others to come alongside. And if, if we have any godparents that they ask to be a part of their lives, if you would please stand today if you're able to be here. Okay, we have some back here. Good. And, and again, they ask you to come alongside them, uh, maybe as family or friends. Uh, to take part in them being able to come to this place at this time. And, and it wasn't just them, but it was also anyone who uh, had a part of your growth in the Word. Uh, and so any vacation Bible school teachers, Sunday school teachers that had a part of their life, uh, please stand, if you would. And you can see that uh, it just continues to grow. Uh, God works through many, many, to bless you. This is looking back, and we just pray a prayer of thanks. Heavenly Father, you are so gracious. You're the perfect Father. You give good gifts to your children. These people standing are the gifts that you gave to these four, and we thank you for them. We thank you for their faithfulness. We thank you for their willingness to pass on to these confirmands the faith through your holy word. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Please be seated. Now it's time to look forward, okay? This has been very important, but your, your future is what's in front of you and where you're going. And so uh, your confession is just a starting point today to that future. 
Jesus said, whoever confesses me before men, I will confess them before my Father in heaven. But he that denies me before men, I will deny him before my Father in heaven. So lift up your hearts, therefore, to God of all grace and joyfully give answer to what in the name of the Lord, I as your pastor will now ask you. Do you this day in the presence of God and of this congregation acknowledge the gifts which God gave you in your baptism? If so, then answer, I do. Do you renounce the devil in all his works and all his ways? If so, then answer, I do renounce them. Do you believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth? If so, then answer, I do so believe. Do you believe in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, He rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven, and He sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty, and from there will come to judge the living and the dead. If so, then answer, I do so believe. Do you believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting? If so, then answer, I do so believe. And now do you intend, with the help of God, to continue steadfast in this confession of the church and to suffer all, even death, rather than fall away from it? If so, then answer, I do so intend by the grace of God. Do you hold all the uh, prophetic and apostolic teachings to be the inspired word of God and confess the teachings of the evangelical Lutheran church as they have been drawn from them to be uh, faithful and true? If so, then answer, I do. And do you desire to be a member of the Evangelical Lutheran Church and of this congregation? If so, then answer, I do. Do you intend faithfully to devote yourselves to the apostles' teaching, to fellowship, to the breaking of bread, and to prayer, and in faith, word, and action to remain true to God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, even to death. If so, then answer, I do intend by the grace of God. Give then your right hand a pledge of your promise and kneel to receive the blessing. Let me part. I'm going to invite uh, Kurt Reitzman, uh, representative uh, of our elders, to come forward, please. If we could have Landon. Landon, the God of all grace, who has called you to eternal glory by Christ Jesus, may make you perfect, establish you, strengthen and settle you, and keep you through faith into eternal life. Amen. Landon chose his verse from Philippians 2, 14 through 16. Do everything without grumbling or arguing, so that you may become blameless and pure. Children of God without fault in a warped and crooked generation. Then you will shine among them like stars in the sky as you hold firmly to the word of life. And then I will be able to boast on the day of Christ that I did not run or labor in vain. Avery, may God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has given to you his Holy Spirit, the spirit of wisdom and knowledge of grace and power, of, uh, keep you and make you holy even unto life everlasting. 
Amen. Avery chose his verse from John 3.16. For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only Son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish but have eternal life. Jocelyn, the, the God of all grace, who has called you to eternal glory through our Lord Jesus Christ, through the power of his Spirit, make you perfect, establish you, strengthen and settle you, and keep you through faith into life eternal. Jocelyn chose her verse from 1 John 4.16. So we have come to know and to believe the love God has for us. God is love, and whoever abides in love abides in God, and God abides in him. <laughs> Special day for these two. Uh, you know, you look back and you saw him out there because he helped get, and then your future, uh, he's your elder, but if he gives you too much grief, I'm, I'm here too. So, just remember. <laughs> Luke, uh, may God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has given to you the Holy Spirit, the spirit of wisdom and knowledge and, and of grace and prayer, and of the power and strength that you need to live this life holy for him until life everlasting. Amen. Luke chose his verse from Isaiah 40, 31. But those who hope in the Lord will renew their strength. They will soar on wings like eagles. They will run and not grow weary. They will walk and not be faint. Thanks. You want to present yourself again before the altar? Thank you, Kurt. Please. Praise you for your great goodness in bringing these, your sons and your daughter, to, to the knowledge of your Son, our Savior Jesus Christ, and enabling them both with the heart to believe and with the mouth to confess His saving name. Grant that bringing forth the fruits of faith, they may continue steadfast and victorious to the day when all who have fought the good fight of faith shall receive the crown of righteousness through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. And now may the Almighty and merciful God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit bless you and keep you. Amen. You may go back and have a seat. You know, uh, the, these passages that these kids picked uh, have, have been wonderful. Uh, they fit right into kind of all that God, or a lot of what God has for his people. Uh, and we, we've, many of us, if not most or all of us, have stood here and, and confessed our faith. And, uh, and we know that ahead of them there will be those tough times. There's going to be temptations. There's going to be, and, and we know how hard it is to be faithful on a regular basis and why we need to devote ourselves. But what's great is when we failed in doing that, God is always there to receive us. And so we confess our sins before him. Dear Lord God, we know that uh, you, you want an intimate relationship with us, a close relationship, one that is all-encompassing of our lives into yours. And yet so many times it's so easy for us to, to get distracted by the things of this world, 
to actually grumble about uh, many of the things, even some of those great blessings. And, and Lord, not to trust you with our whole heart. Uh, not to love our neighbors as ourselves, uh, but to think of ourselves only. Lord, it's, it's difficult to be devoted. For the times that we haven't devoted ourselves fully, forgive us. Draw us back to you, to be close to you always. In Jesus' name, who makes this possible. Amen. Amen. Uh, the passage Avery picked, John 3.16, For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only Son, that whoever believes in him will not perish, but have eternal life. The gospel in a nutshell, that's ours, that's our assurance. No matter how many times as sheep we have strayed, gone our own way, looked at the grass greener on the other side, God still loves us. He proved it in Jesus. And therefore, I can announce to you the entire forgiveness of all your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our Lord uh, leads us to places of refreshment, strength, and uh, he not only cares for us as a sheep and guards us from the evil one, but he feeds us as well. Uh, he, he makes sure we're nourished on his very body and blood, for on the night which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks. He broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. And again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sins. Do this for the remembrance of me. And Jocelyn, as you said, the peace that comes through this is with us always. Amen. Come and receive this gift.